All right, so today I want to introduce you to the Sterling Ball Python. The Sterling actually consists of the Super Pastel and the Cinnamon, and it's extremely variable from one Sterling to another. As a matter of fact, if you have a Sterling, it's probably not the same as somebody else's Sterling. You could probably line up 10 different Sterlings on the table, and they would all look significantly different, and so it'll be pretty amazing that they all have the same genes and have such a different look from one to another. And really it comes down to the Cinnamon and the Pastel are extremely variable variable. So you can have a whole bunch of different cinnamons. Some of them look kind of a, like a cinnamon color and some of them can look really dark. And it's the same with the pastel and the super pastel with two copies of the gene. Sometimes you can get a really bright pastel and sometimes you can get a pretty browned out, almost like a reddish brown looking pastel. And you can definitely see that influence when you mix those two together into sterlings. You see a huge variability from one example to another. So today I'm going to jump over to the internet and now I'm to show you the variability of the sterling and the potential working other genes into the sterling ball python. All right, so I'm going to jump over here on morphmarket.com and I want to start with the cinnamon ball python. This is what one version of a cinnamon looks like. And you can tell in this example it has kind of a cinnamon color, almost like a reddish brown color. And here is another version of a cinnamon. Take a look at this. It's kind of hard to believe that these are actually the same gene. Both of them are cinnamons. One of them looks kind of a reddish brown, one looks really dark. And I also wanted to show you several examples of a super pastel with two copies of the the pastel gene. Here is probably the brightest yellow super pastel that I found over here on Morph Market. And believe it or not, there's a lot of different versions of super pastel. This is the brightest yellow one. Here's another one that is kind of in between. It has like the bright yellow and it has almost like a black outline around some of the alien heads on the sides. And here's another super pastel that'll kind of blow you away. Take a look at this. This is like a reddish brown super pastel. It's pretty amazing. And if you actually take the Super Pastel, mix it with the Cinnamon, you get all these different versions as far as the visual appearance. So you can almost look at the, you can almost look at a Sterling and figure out which which line of Super Pastel and Cinnamon that it actually came from, just from the visual appearance. It's kind of interesting. So here is the first one I wanted to show you. When I think of Sterling, I usually think of the Silver Sterling sink. And so there's a lot of them that are really kind of a silver color. I'd say it's and there's a really huge variability. There's like the silver version and then there's other versions that look completely nothing like this at all. It's pretty amazing. So this is actually, if you look at the genes on this one, this is the super pastel and the cinnamon. It's a sterling. And here's another example of a sterling. Take a look at this. This is completely different than the silver one. This is almost like a gold version of the sink. And this has the same thing, the super pastel and the cinnamon. And I actually pulled up, uh, I think four more. Take a look at this. This is another one. You can almost see the, the version of the Super Pastel in this one that kind of had the black outline of the kind of the alien heads on the side. You could definitely tell it has that version of the Super Pastel with the cinnamon in this mix. Here's another one. This looks completely, it's hard to believe that all these are Sterlings. If you look at the genetics, they're all Super Pastels and cinnamon. It's pretty amazing. This one has almost like a faded out top on the top. And here is another version of the Sterling. Looks completely different. This one is a little bit more faded. Has some more yellow coming in the side. And I actually pulled up one more version. Take a look at this. It just goes on and on and on. This one almost, almost looks like it has concrete camouflage. They put it here on the concrete and you almost can't even see it. It almost has this, this pixelation of like the grays and silver through the snake. It's pretty amazing that all of them are super pastel cinnamons and you get this huge variability between the different versions of the sterling. And kind of the challenge is, is when I'm actually showing you other genes mixed in with the sterling, you're always thinking, you know, is this, you know, just the one example? And of, of course there are many different examples of that gene mixed in with the sterling that look completely different from one to the other. So I just want to show you maybe a couple of each of the genes 
things mixed into the Sterling. So I wanted to start with the lesser ball python. So this is what a lesser looks like. It's in the blue-eyed leucista complex. So you breed two of them together and you get an all-white snake with blue eyes. Pretty awesome. And usually when you mix lesser in with a lot of combinations, usually you see a lot of contrast and brightness coming through. Although the Sterling is extremely visually dominant in a lot of cases, it'll really dominate the visual appearance of a lot of the really, really visual dominant genes that you mix into the mix. So in this one, you'll actually see, take a look at this if you mix lesser in with the Sterling. This is the silver version of the Sterling with the lesser in it. Pretty awesome. And you can definitely tell on this one, it kind of has the floating alien heads and kind of the high definition that you see in a lot of lessers. And here's another version of the lesser Sterling. Take a look at this completely different visual appearance. And you can definitely tell, you know, just based on that other Sterling, it looks like, you know, one of the versions of the Sterling with the lesser in the mix. And it's pretty amazing how variable the Sterling can be. I say that's probably one of the challenges of working with the Sterling. So here is the spider ball python. The spider is really visually dominant when it comes to kind of dominating the visual appearance when mixing with other genes. And usually the, the spider has kind of the spider web pattern right down the top. A lot of times it can have a really gold color and usually spiders have a really crazy pattern on top of the head, which is pretty cool. So take a look at what happens when you mix spider with the sterling. Take a look at this. It completely shatters the pattern. And of course this is the silver version of the sterling with the spider in it. Probably one of the most impressive combinations. I really like how it really explodes the pattern and just makes for a really impressive snake. As a matter of fact, there's another version. Take a look at this one. This is completely different. This is also a sterling spider, which is pretty amazing. You put these two snakes side by side and ask someone to actually pick out the genes and believe it or not, they probably wouldn't believe that it's actually exactly the same genes in these two two snakes. Pretty amazing variability in the sterling. So this is the super pastel and the cinnamon which is the sterling with the spider and I really like how it just really explodes the spider pattern in both of these. I don't think one is better than the other. The, the kind of the silver color or the, the one that has more yellow and I think they're both really impressive combinations. So here is the pinstripe ball python. The pinstripe is really visually dominant as well when you mix it with other genes. Usually all the time you can always tell that there's pinstripe in the mix. Probably one of my favorite standalone morphs. It's really super bright gold. And here's what happens if you mix pinstripe in with a sterling. Take a look at this. You kind of get like a browned out snake. This is the pinstripe sterling. And I couldn't find a whole bunch of versions on this. I think, you know, the pinstripe kind of dominates as far is mixing it into the sterling so there's not a real huge difference between the different versions of the pinstripe sterling and one of the things i thought was kind of interesting with this i usually don't you know make fun of people's prices over here on morph market but i thought this was interesting the sterling's pinstripe is selling for 262 dollars and 50 cents i've never seen anyone get a price down to the penny 50 cents it's like why didn't you just round up to 265 dollars I thought that was kind of interesting because, you know, a lot of people, they, they kind of kind of have a ballpark as far as the numbers. It's not really an exact science pricing ball python. So you could probably round up in this case or even round down and it wouldn't make much of a difference unless you're really tracking your expenses and you need a certain dollar amount to cover your costs in your operation. I just thought that was kind of a side note on the price on this sterling pinstripe. So here is the spot nose ball python. When it comes to the spot nose, it looks almost like a normal ball python, almost like the classic wild type. You can always tell it's the spot nose because of the really crazy head pattern on top of the head. You mix it with a lot of combos and you can make some really impressive results, especially when you're mixing it in with something like the clown. It's really awesome. And you actually, when you mix it with the sterling, you get a really dramatic effect. Here's what happens when you mix the spot nose in with the sterling. Take 
take a look at this. Probably one of the most amazing combos as far as actually dominating the visual appearance of the Sterling with another gene. It's kind of interesting because a lot of times spot nose by itself isn't really that visually dominant in a lot of these cases. And I thought it kind of reacted kind of interesting with this to make this crazy little kind of bubbly line right down the top and to bring out a lot of the colors and patterns on the sides. And in this case, it's kind of interesting because the Sterling, uh, the spot nose usually has a crazy head stamp and that's one of the indicators that you actually have spot nose in the mix. And with the Sterling, you really can't see the head pattern of the spot nose. I thought that was kind of a unique characteristic of this combination. So here is the banana ball python. Now we're kind of moving up a level of visual dominance. Usually when you mix banana with other genes, the banana can really dominate as far as the visual appearance. As a matter of fact, I've actually bred some bananas and I produce pastel bananas and the banana is so visually dominant you can't even tell if pastel is in the mix. It's really dominant. So here's what happens if you work banana into the sterling. Take a look at this. This is kind of an interesting combination because you can almost see the sterling breaking through almost dominating the banana which is really extremely visually dominant compared to the banana banana is pretty high up on the top and in this case you can see this is kind of the metallic version of the sterling it's not really you know some of the browned out versions you can almost look at this and you can tell which version of the sterling you can have after you get kind of get used to all the different combinations of the cinnamon and the super pastels working together so here's the last one I wanted to show you. This is the bamboo. And as a matter of fact, this is actually a picture of Bobby, the snake that I have around my neck at the beginning and the end of the videos. And the, the bamboo is extremely visually dominant, probably a step above the coral glow. And here's what happens if you mix bamboo in with the sterling. Take a look at this. This is probably one of my favorite sterling combinations with the bamboo and the sterling. It makes for a really impressive combo. You can definitely tell almost from the head that the bamboo is in there it kind of gives you this interesting looking head with a stripe right down the side it almost kind of looks like Bobby kind of Bobby's head a little bit faded out and then you know it really super fades out the bamboo which is really kind of surprising that anything can really dominate the bamboo and a lot of things that dominate the bamboo will actually completely mask the bamboo like if you mixed in like champagne with bamboo or something like that they would completely dominate it in this case it's almost like like 50 50 fighting for dominance you can definitely see some of the kind of the hearts on the side from the bamboo and you definitely see a lot of influence from the sterling it looks to make a really impressive snake all right so it is time for the question of the day and anime omni king asks what are your most profitable snakes? And that is a very good question. As a matter of fact, a lot of people think, you know, if you have a really expensive ball python, you probably make more money with a really high-end ball python. And it's kind of not necessarily always the case. As a matter of fact, I have quite a few ball pythons in my collection that are pretty high-end morphs. And the problem is, is I would say when it comes to profitability, you really need a snake that will consistently eat year after year and that will lay eggs and lay a lot of eggs. And let me tell you, if you have some females, it doesn't matter how expensive they are. If they never lay eggs, then they are not profitable. Let me tell you, I'd say maybe about half of my ball pythons on any given year will actually lay eggs. It's kind of crazy when you're talking about profitability. If you can actually find a really high-end morph that lays a lot of eggs every single year, that would probably be the most profitable ball python. So that is pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.